Uh, there are some important points about thin uh, plates, but the mass moment of inertia of them about x, y, and z. Uh, z axis is perpendicular to this plane using right hand rule. Let's say we have a thin plate with the thickness of t. And t is very small. Then uh, the mass moment of inertia based on definition, for example, about the x-axis, is going to be, if you choose this tiny element, it's going to be that mass um, dm integral of it times the distance of it from the x-axis, which is, which is going to be y, right? This distance is y. So it's going to be y squared times dm. And also, uh, the mass moment of inertia, but y-axis is going to be dm times y squared. Uh, sorry, but the y-axis is going to be this distance, which is x. So x squared times dm. How about z-axis? The distance of this part, this element, from the z-axis is this, right? If I call it r, then r squared is going to be x squared plus y squared. So the area moment of uh, the mass moment of inertia about the z-axis is x squared plus y squared times dm. If you compare all of these together, you're going to see i z z is equal to i x x plus i y y. Only when thickness is very small. If the thickness is big, then uh, the distance of this element, for example, from the x-axis is not going to be y. And the distance of this element from the y-axis is not going to be x. Just, come, just imagine the thickness is really big. Then if you choose different points on this uh, element, then they're going to have different, different distances from the y-axis, right? So this is true only for thin plates. That's an important point to know. And um, you can use this to find some interesting uh, results. For example, just imagine we have a tiny um, disk. X and Y. And Z axis is perpendicular to it. If you remember, we calculated the, air, uh, the mass moment of inertia of a cylinder about the Z axis. And it was equal to one half of mass times the radius of it is square, right? Now, what is I of this disk, tiny disk with the thickness of T, which is small, about X axis and about Y axis? First of all, because of symmetry, I about X and I about Y, they are exactly the same thing, right? because the distribution of this material about x-axis and y-axis, they are exactly the same thing. If I rotate this object 90 degree, this is gonna be exactly as this, right? So i about x and i about y, they are exactly the same thing. So i x x is equal to i y y. And from the other side, we know i about z is equal to i x x plus i y y. So from all of this, we can conclude i x x, which is equal to i y y, is going to be equal to one half of i z. So it's going to be one over four times mass times r squared. That's an important point to know. Uh, there is a tricky point actually about this equation. Sometimes um, we have half a disk. And people are going to ask you, what is I about x-axis and y-axis? Let's say the mass of this half a disk is m. Then uh, there is a common mistake that people say I x x based on this equation is going to be 1 over 4 times m times r squared, right? Uh, sorry, 1 over 8, because they are saying this is going to be half of it. But that is not correct. Uh, if I had a full circle, a full disk, the mass 
the mass of the total circle was the total dating was 2m right let's say i have the whole disk then the uh, the uh, mass moment of inertia but x-axis could would have been um based on this equation one over four times the mass which is 2m times r squared and r is the radius and if i and also we know the uh, the mass moment of inertia of this part and this half a disk about x axis they are exactly the same thing right because of symmetry so the mass moment of inertia of this part is going to be half of this so if i divide this by two then again i'm going to get um let's write it this way i x x is going to be one over four times m r squared so we got exactly the same equation for a full disk we have this for a half a disk we have exactly the same equation but the point is m here is the mass of this half a disk and m here is is the mass of the whole disk right we should um, keep that in mind similar thing for y for this half a disk i about y axis is gonna be one over four times mass times r squared uh, and another important point that I need to add here, which we are going to use it a lot, is something which, which is called uh, parallel accept theorem. What is this parallel accept theorem? It says if you have a rigid body with the centroid of G, and mass of m so g is the centroid which is very important here if you calculate the mass moment of inertia about this axis about the axis which is passing through the centroid and uh, let's call it i bar then if i want to calculate the mass of uh, mass moment of inertia but any other axis which is parallel to the previous axis and the distance of it from the original axis is d then i about this axis the new axis is going to be equal to i bar plus mass times d squared if I want to find uh, the mass moment of inertia about another axis, it's going to be I bar plus mass times the new distance squared, right? But it is very important to notice that the R that you are using on the right side of the equation is uh, the mass moment of inertia about this axis which is passing through the centroid. Why this is important, for example, if I have another axis here, I cannot say I about this axis is equal to I about this axis plus mass times the distance squared. That is absolutely wrong because this is not passing through the centroid. Whenever you are using this parallel axis theorem, this axis must pass through the centroid. And um, this is going to be a useful equation to in, in a lot of problems. Just in, um, in a simple example, we should already know the solution. Let's um, see how this theorem works. So if you remember, we calculated the mass moment of inertia of a bar with the length of L and mass of M about this axis, right? It was 1 over 12 times mass times L squared. Now, if I want to find the mass moment of inertia of the same bar about this axis, which is passing through one end of it, and it is parallel to this one. So based on parallel axis theorem, I is going to be equal to I bar plus mass times distance squared. And the distance here is L over 2. So mass times L over 2 squared. So it's going to be 1 over 12 ML squared plus 1 over 4. 
ml squared, which is going to be equal to 1 over 3, 1 third of ml squared, which we calculated from by the definition of mass moment of inertia before. So it works. The mass of uh, the parallel axis theorem is working.